This week, we seek to recover what was lost. We'll talk about our favorite lost civilizations in fiction and fact, and we'll do an experiment showing how fluid dynamics has a memory of its very own. And finally, we'll try to help another one of you remember their lost media. All this and more on We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is sponsored by Netflix. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we get tried, convicted, and sentenced to life in the future without ever seeing our lawyers. This week, we are looking at the tremendous amount of things that have been lost over the years and see if we can get any of them back. I'm Annalee Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglesar Kill. We start by searching for our favorite lost civilizations, both fictional and real. Now, my favorite fictional one is Atlantis because that's where Aquaman lives. I don't see how you could do any other choice there. Yeah. My favorite real one is the Lost City of Z. That's a great name. Yes, it was named by this guy, Percy Fawcett, who went into the Amazon looking for it in like 1925, never came out. And all, a whole bunch of legends sprung up around it. There's like a cult de dedicated to him, but Nobody ever found the city of Z to the point where archaeologists said it was all a myth. Now, that changed when suddenly Google Maps sprang up and you could see huge cleared areas in the jungle. You could see long ditches. And people realized that there was this city there. And they think it was about as big as any medieval city in Europe. And it just, people died out and it just kind of faded back into the jungle. Huh, that's so interesting. Yes, satellite photography is letting us find a lot of lost civilizations. I'm gonna have to say my favorite fictional city is probably Relia because, you know, I wanna see Cthulhu and, you know, the lost city under the sea where dead Cthulhu waits dreaming is pretty much what we all, that's all what we all aspire to. I would I love to see Aquaman versus Cthulhu. Oh, so awesome. And when it comes to non-fictional cities, I'm gonna say my favorite is Chatalhuyuk, which is one of the earliest cities we've ever found. It's in Turkey. Uh, it was inhabited probably between 7500 BC to 5700 BC. So that's pre-Bronze Age. And it had about, oh, uh, you know, maybe 10,000 inhabitants. So it wasn't huge. The thing about it that's cool, there's two things. One is that it was built all as one chunk, like a hive. So all the houses were squashed up next to each other. There were no streets at all. So it looked very unlike a typical city today. You entered your house through the roof. So the sidewalks were all on the roof. The other thing that was really cool about it is that it didn't seem to have rich and poor. You don't see big houses and small houses. All the houses are roughly the same size. So I would love to go back in time and find out, is it really true that it would be possible to have a city without class division? And also- So, so an editor in chief, for example, would be exactly the same as a contributing reporter. Well, in terms of the size of their house, but maybe not so much their network connection. That's one of the things that gets lost to history. Like, how good was the Wi-Fi throughout the city of Chatalhuyuk? Nobody really knows for sure. I like to think that it would be all equal everywhere. Well, that's a nice thought. Of course, civilizations aren't the only things that get lost over time. According to thermodynamics, all systems tend towards entropy. But thanks to the power of fluid dynamics, it's sometimes possible to get a little of that organization back again. As we find out in this week's Esther Gets Experimental. Joining us today on Esther Gets Experimental is Terry Johnson. He's been with us before. He's a genetic engineer and the co-author of How to Defeat Your Own Clone. But today you're gonna to be talking to us about fluid dynamics. We're gonna yes. do a simple experiment demonstrating fluid dynamics. So tell us a little bit about what we're gonna see. Yeah. So every time fluids move, there's a battle between viscosity and inertia. And if you think about it, let's say you had fluid and it's all moving in this direction. Mm -hmm. You're a little packet of fluid. There's gonna be vibrations and you're gonna get bumped. And if you're bumped and you're sort of moved off track slightly, if viscosity wins, then the fluid around you is gonna stop you and it's gonna keep you in a nice orderly flow. It's what's called laminar flow. And it's just very nice and reproducible and you know where everything is going. 
If inertia wins, then there's a little kick in that packet of fluid, and it just keeps on going because viscosity can't stop it. And because it keeps on going, it knocks all the other fluid around, and that propagates, and you end up with very mixed up flow, which we call turbulent. Um, so what we're going to take a look at is some of the consequences of laminar flow. And this is a, a, a flow chamber. It actually would be a lot like a washing machine. It's got an inner cylinder and an outer cylinder and fluid in between. Um, and we're going to demonstrate some of the properties of laminar flow. So here what I'm doing is I'm adding corn syrup. So this is the exact same material, but it's been dyed with food coloring. We're going to use uh, two dyes, red and blue, so that you can see both of these. As I'm spinning, you can see that the layers of this fluid are moving. And as they move, they pull the dye along with them. So you can see that the dye is doing something that you uh, sort of expect. It's spreading out, but it's spreading out in a very defined fashion. If we reverse this flow going backwards, you can see that all of the work that we've done in the mixing is being undone. And if we do this right and it stays laminar, we're eventually going to get all the way back to those original two spots of dye. Wow, yeah, there they are. So understanding the sort of uh, physics between these different regimes of flow, whether it's nice, smooth laminar flow or mixed up turbulent flow, uh, and knowing where you are in which re regime you're working uh, can allow you to design some really interesting things. So basically this experiment helps us understand what it's like to be dealing with water at a microscopic scale. Yep. Thanks, Terry, for coming by. My pleasure. And now, a word from our sponsor. This episode of We Come to the Future is brought to you by Netflix. Netflix streams TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. From sci-fi and fantasy to documentaries and TED Talks, Netflix offers a wide array of TV shows and movies. When you sign up as a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your web browser or write to your TV with an Xbox 360, PS3, or Nintendo Wii. You can watch as many movies as you'd want anytime you want and cancel anytime. For a limited time, get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to netflix.com future and sign up now. Be sure to use that URL so they know we sent you. With all this talk about the lost and the found, we figured it was the perfect time to dive into our email and find yet another poor soul in need of saving in this week's Lost Media. Now, last time, the answer to the question about what was the story about the weird interdimensional three-way fluid aliens was Isaac Asimov's The Gods Themselves, right? right. So we had a classic, classic book at that time, and today's selection is also apparently a lost classic. It comes from Jennifer Shearer. She says, I read the book I'm looking for in paperback in the 80s, and I think it was by one of the great sci-fi authors. The main character was a fairy, but didn't realize it since he hadn't developed his wings yet. He's green-skinned and has antennae, which is an important detail, I think. The other fairies had been killed off for their wings, which were used for silk, and which is why he ended up on a different world as an orphan. Can you please help me find the title of this book because I'd really like to read it again. Okay, help us find that book about the wingless fairy. You can write to us at wecomefromthefuture at revision3.com or just leave us a comment. And do write to us if you have your own lost media that you need us to find. That's all for this week's show. If you like us, remember you can just click the subscribe button on YouTube to catch us every week. You can also find us on iTunes by searching for io9, and you can find us here at Revision 3. I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. And I'm Annalie Newitz. Don't get lost, because we want to see you next week in the future.